Assalamu alaikum. So uh, let's continue with part two. Uh, in this part, we'll talk about Mendelian uh, genetic disorders um, or disorders that are inherited uh, based on Mendelian laws uh, and inheritance patterns. So in, in, general, in general, genetic disorders can be categorized into two types. We have monogenic and multigenic disorders. Monogenic disorders are the one ones that follow the Mendelian, uh, Mendelian laws. Uh, they are caused by a single gene. Usually they are confined to an organ system unless uh, the gene is important for multiple organs like enzymes for example, then um, multiple organs can be involved. Uh, multigenic disorders um, will be the topic of our next uh, lecture. Usually multiple genes are involved, they are mutated, uh, the environment plays a, an important role. So as a result, uh, these disorders are complex, they are unpredictable, they can be gender-based as well. So let's start with the Mendelian genetic disorders now. So again, they are caused by single genes. Um, they are mainly autosomal disorders, meaning that chromosomes other than the sex chromosomes, um, that is chrom chromosomes 1 to 22, are uh, involved mainly. Um, this is followed by S chromosome based or linked disorders. Uh, then we have uh, Y linked disorders and mitochondrial uh, disorders. 9% um, of pediatric deaths are uh, caused a, as a result of Mendelian disorders. Um, mainly they are, um, so 38% uh, are due to uh, genetic disorders, partly genetic disorders, 3% uh, are due to chromosomal disorders. So, and in some numbers as well, 2% uh, of the population has a monogenic disorders, mainly they are, uh, for the most part, they are dominant, uh, some of them are recessive, and 6% uh, are X-linked. So you don't have to memorize these numbers uh, specifically, you just need to know, you know which one is predominant and which one is a minor, which one is minor relative to others. All right, so uh, mainly these uh, symptoms for Mendelian genetic disorders appear early on in life, uh, during the first 10 years. Uh, some of them uh, appear later on in life. Okay, specifically at uh, uh, starting at 9% at appear uh, by the end of puberty. So um, the way we represent these Mendelian disorders is by a pedigree. So what you see uh, to the right is a pedigree. Okay, so that's a pedigree right here. Um, where you have the square representing males, um, circles represent um, ma uh, females, so this means that they are married and these are their children. So they have a girl, another girl, a boy, a girl, and a boy. And this boy, for example, is also married to a female, of course, and they have these two little beautiful girls. Now this girl is married to this man right here and they have Rulad. So anyhow, uh, if the circle or square is filled, it means that this person is affected, okay? Um, if half of the circle or square uh, is filled, then it means that this person is a carrier. Actually, it's not shown in here, but um, okay. If you have a line, it means that this, uh, this person is a non-penetrant carrier. We'll talk about penetrance in a second. Okay, so these are the symbols right here. Um, this means that this person is an obligate carrier, um, having one gene, uh, one allele mutated and the other allele is normal. Uh, this here, if you have an arrow right here, it means that this person is a, it's a proband. And a proband is basically, it's the individual that is studied or reported. Okay, so for example, if this person uh, comes to the clinic and asks for genetic counseling, uh, and the, uh, the inheritance of a phenotype is uh, studied, then this person would be represented by an arrow. 
Uh, this cross line indicates that the person is diseased. This is a stillbirth, meaning that the fetus is, um, is not born or uh, when born, um, that the fetus is um, uh, dead. Okay, so uh, this is marriage, this is divorced, uh, consanguinity is represented by double lines right here, family marriage. Uh, this means that they are, uh, that the, 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 these are twins and they are monozygotic if they are represented by um, these lines. This means that these two females are dizygotic uh, twins um, and, and so on. Okay. So, um, so these are the Mendelian uh, disorders right here. I don't know what's wrong with, with these slides, so bear with me. So anyhow, so there are different patterns for Mendelian inheritance. Uh, there is the autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant. Uh, we have the X-linked, um, and X-linked disorders can be dominant or recessive. We have the Y-linked, and we have the mitochondrial. So recessive disorders, autosomal recessive disorders are not clinically apparent um, unless the person uh, has two mutant or defective alleles. So if one copy uh, of the alleles is, is muta mutated, the person is still normal with no symptoms. But this person is, is considered a carrier. Okay. So the great majority of disorders to metabolic enzyme deficiencies are autosomal recessive. And it makes sense, though, because if they are dominant, well, uh, then the, the, the fetus would actually would not be born. Okay? Uh, you would have stillbirth. Um, that's why the majority of metabolic disorders are, are or they follow the recessive inheritance pattern. Now, these are the criteria for autosomal recessive disorders. Uh, parents are usually carriers and they are asymptomatic, uh, except that the child would inherit the defective allele from each of the uh, parent, of the parents. Um, they are, uh, what you have here is clustering of the phenotype, the disease phenotype that is, um, within a family. Uh, the risk of a sibling of a of carry individual showing a phenotype is 25 percent so if you have uh if you have uh, two if you have carrier parents then the chance that a child would be affected is 25 percent you have something known as pseudodominance meaning that uh, children of an affected individual and a carrier that's that's uh 50 there's a 50 percent uh chance uh, of course, consanguinity um, is um, well is really important, especially in our society, since we have a lot of interfamily marriages. Uh, that increases the risk of uh, manifesting a recessive phenotype. Males and females are equally affected. Okay, so this is basically how it looks like. So what you see in here, for example, um, there is no uh, phenotype that appears in this family except uh, with these individuals right here. So you have clustering of the disease within uh, a, a branch of the family. You can see that males and females are equally affected. You have a lot of carriers in here. Okay. And um, uh, what else? And you notice that the circle or square are half filled. Okay. so. Uh, an example is, uh, a very famous example is phenylketonuria. Uh, this is a um, disease caused by a metabolic uh, defect in the synthesis of tyrosine from phenylalanine. Uh, the, the gene that, that encodes phenylalanine hydroxylase is defective. So as a result, phenylalanine accumulates and it converts into phenylpyruvic acid. Uh, phenylpyruvic acid would uh, accumulate in, in different organs, including the nervous system, leading to mental retardation. And that's why uh, it's now accustomed to diagnose, um, to screen uh, 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 babies once they're born for phenylketonuria because the treatment is basically to limit the intake of phenylalanine for these individuals. 
there are other examples that you don't really have to memorize okay so um, um, whenever you see a list you don't worry about it uh, just you know just to give you a sense of the famous or common diseases in uh, society okay so you have cystic fibrosis thalassemia is very common here in Jordan sickle cell anemia as well uh, so um, and so on okay so now there is a phenomenon known, known as allelic heterogeneity. Okay, so these terms um, are really important for you to know. And I'll try to connect whatever term I give you to something that is relevant to you and your studies. So allelic heterogeneity in, uh, means that you have a gene that may have different mutations. Okay and in different individuals so each individual would have a different mutation and that would cause variable phenotypic manifestations uh, of a disease the severity of the disease can also vary in different individuals according to the effect of this mutation an example is a mutation in the in the fibroblast growth factor receptor 2 different mutations can cause um, well m mutated FGFR2 would cause craniofacial dysmorphogenesis uh, dysmor um, and the severity of, uh, of uh, this syndrome uh, can vary according to uh, the type of mutation that would affect the gene okay so uh, Usually, it's associated with cranial uh, synostosis. Synostosis. Uh, excuse me, you know, I don't know these terms a lot. So, that's what uh, cranial synostosis is. Okay. So, you have something else known as compound heterozygote. Now, what happens here is that uh, it. Uh, you look at the gene and in, in, in parents and the, and the gene is, or the allele is actually, both parents have one defective allele, except that the mutation that causes this defect is different, okay? So the individual would actually carry a defective gene because both alleles are defective, except that they are defective as a result of different mutations. Okay, um, again, uh, um, so most of the autosomal recessive disorders result from compound heterozygosity unless they are that that parents are related to each other. Uh, a good example is the Smith uh, Lemley Opitz syndrome syndrome right here which uh, is caused by mutation in the, in the reductase enzyme uh, DHCR7 that is responsible for, it's one of the enzymes responsible for the synthesis of cholesterol. So you would have a number of oral and dental manifestations in these individuals. Now, what's important for, for me is not really the symptoms right here. So that's for you to read. But what I want you to know is the, uh, the, the syndrome, the disorder. I want you to know the gene that causes that disorder and the pattern of inheritance, okay? So, that's autosomal recessive. Now, in terms of the autosomal dominant inheritance, um, you can see here that you have, um, you have uh, the, the, the phenotype appearing in every single generation, whereas with the autosomal recessive disorders, the, the uh, disorder is clustered within a family, okay? So uh, something else in terms of the pedigree that is important is these uh, symbols right here. Uh, this indicates uh, ge generation. So that's the first generation, the second generation, the third generation. So sometimes we would uh, indicate this person right here as uh, one, one or I one that is generation individual one of generation one okay um, so so these are the criteria for autosomal dominant disorders that is the phenotype appears in every generation uh, males and females are equally at risk and a child of an affected homozygous parent has a 50% chance of inheriting the disorder because this person can get one of the uh, chromosomes from uh, any one of those 
any, any one of the parents. These are examples of autosomal dominant disorders. So you can have pseudochondral chondroplasia, um, Huntington's disease, Wilson disease, galactosemia, uh, and so on. Now, there is something related to autosomal dominant disorders, and that is uh, pleiotropy. Pleiotropy uh, means that you can have a mutation in one gene, but that causes different or variable disorders. Okay, and a great example is lamin A. Now, lamin A is a protein that is important for the nuclear matrix. Okay, the the matrix that uh, that encloses the nucleus. It's important for maintaining the nucleus and the DNA inside the nucleus. Now, this la so lamin A is really important. Now, you can have different mutations in lamin A, and surprisingly, that would lead to di different disorders. Again, you don't have to memorize these disorders, but uh, th these are some of the common ones, like the Emery uh, Dreyfus muscular, uh, muscular dystrophy. You can have the charcot Mary tooth disease, which is, all of these, all of these uh, are really variable in terms, all of these are caused by mutations in the same gene but they have variable uh, symptoms, okay? Even within the same disease itself, you can have variable uh, phenotypes, okay? Now, there's something related to um, uh, autosomal dominant disorders known as locus heterogeneity, meaning that you can have the same clinical syndrome that would result from mutations at different genes. Okay. So you can have, for example, like these ind individuals right here. Uh, you can have, th th they have a phenotype, and these individuals have the same condition, but it's actually different genes that, would, that cause this uh, condition right here. Okay. An example is uh, amylogenesis imperfecta, which can be caused by mutations in AMLX, ENAM, uh, MMP20, so all of these, like in, in that's enamel, so all of these genes, if they are defective, you would have uh, these conditions right here where you have sort of like carries, maybe, um, uh, in, in the individual's uh, uh, teeth. Okay, there is something also that is important for autosomal dominant disorders, and that is penetrance. And penetrance means it's all or none phenomenon. That is, it's either the, the, the individual would show a phenotype or not. So if the phenotype is absent, it means that this person or this condition is non-penetrant. If the phenotype is apparent, then it's the, the phenotype or is, is uh, penetrant. Now, you can have with autosomal dominant disorders incomplete penetrance. That is, you have variable severity of the disorder. And, um, and, and, and this is a case of what the mutation does to the gene, or if the person has a, a way to compensate for the uh, defective disorder, okay? So, why is it that there is incomplete penetrance? Well, it could be that this person has decreased expression of the mutated gene, um, so you can have um, a presence of a modifier gene like transcription factors or regulators that can compensate for the loss of the gene or they can uh, increase the expression of the defective gene to compensate for the mutation or loss of function. Okay, um, you can have individual heterogeneity as well for some reason. It could be interaction between the, the protein that is produced with some other protein um, that can compensate for the loss uh, of function of, of that uh, gene. It could be the, the presence of different mutations within one gene, so you can have allele heterogeneity, so you can have different mutations that can affect uh, the, the uh, severity of uh, symptoms. Or you can have environmental factors, and that's really important. We'll talk about this uh, at the end, at, in part three. Although this is not, this is a, uh, we're talking about single gene disorders, um, whereas in the last lecture we'll talk about uh, multigenic disorders or multifactorial disorders. So, you know, you have to differentiate between the two. A good example is Huntington's disease. Uh, basically, it's uh, a gene known as Huntington, and this, uh, these individuals uh, in their gene, they, they're, well, we all have a CAG repeat. So basically, this gene has a CAG that is repeated several times. So normally, 
the repeat is, is less than 26 times of that CRG and CRG encodes for glutamine by the way so you would have uh, about 26 glutamine residues or less in, in normal uh, proteins of Huntington's uh, proteins whereas uh, you can have uh, people with increased number of of uh, repeats um, and and they they are still normal except that the protein is not quite functioning well uh, now you can have people with uh, 36 more uh, repeats like 36 to 39 the the protein is really affected except that the symptoms are not really clearly shown uh, or severe so this is what is known as repeat uh, re sorry reduced penetrance if the repeats are more than 40 then the person would have huntington's disorder okay now um uh, Now, there are examples related to uh, craniofacial disorders. An example is uh, tuberous sclerosis, which is a rare disease that causes uh, uh, tumors or abnormal growth in the brain and other organs. Uh, right here, you have a pitting of the enamel. Okay. Um, and uh, there is something else, and, and the Marfan syndrome right here, which is a genetic disorder. Uh, in um, in the uh, elastin protein and that results in abnormal gum in these individuals okay now so let's go on with the with uh, sex linked inheritance we'll, first we'll talk about the X chromosome uh, there now the X chromosome basically you, you know that uh, females have two X chromosomes but males have only one X chromosome now so it doesn't make sense that females would do have uh, uh, double the number of genes so they would produce double the amount of proteins now it doesn't make sense so what happens is that one of the X chromosomes in females is inactivated and this is known as dosage compensation so that males and females would produce uh, the same uh, amount of proteins in their cells now this X chromosome inactivation is actually random and this occurs during embryogenesis. So what happens is that if you look at any cell uh, in the female body, uh, you would see that a, some group of cells, let's say in the liver, for example, you have some group of cells expressing the paternal X, uh, X chromosome, whereas other group of cells would, exp would have uh, the, the maternal X chromosome uh, activated and the other one is inactivated and so on. So this, this is really, uh, again, random inactivation. Now, the inactivated X chromosome uh, is uh, is basically um, uh, an aggregated, clustered uh, uh, chromosome. It's inactive, and um, and and uh, the genes are not really expressed, and it's known as the bar body. All right. Now, now X-linked disorders. Uh, they follow the same thing as autosomal disorders, that is, they can be uh, recessive or dominant. Okay, so, so basically um, what happens here is that uh, an important uh, function or role or uh, critical effect of in X chromosome inactivation is that uh, it could be that the normal X chromosome or the X chromosome that carries the normal gene would be inactivated and that means that the one that is expressed is actually the uh, it's expressed from the abnormal allele or it could be that the female might escape uh, a disease by inactivating the X chromosome that carries the abnormal allele okay now th so that depends on on which X chromosome is inactivated and the proportion of cells that contain the activated or inactivated X chromosome. So uh, you can read this, since, since an organ like liver would originate from small cluster of cells, a large number of cells within the organ could have a normal functioning X chromosome or a, a, an abnormal functioning X chromosome. Okay, so uh, the, the female might escape a disorder or they might have a disorder uh, apparent. So you can have uh, X-linked recessive disorders or dominant disorders. 
So with the X-linked recessive disorders, uh, it affects mainly females, uh, and these affected uh, males, usually they are born to unaffected parents. The mother is, is normally asymptomatic since it's uh, uh, recessive disorders. Female may be affected if the father is affected and the mother is a carrier or affected, and that makes sense, right? So that's basically the, um, the disorder and that's how the, this is the pedigree. So pay attention to these pedigrees because I might give you a pedigree and ask you uh, the pattern of inheritance uh, uh, according to the pedigree. So here you have a carrier female uh, that is married to a, uh, a, a normal uh, male and they have these children right here. So uh, they do have an affected son because he got the X chromosome from his mom. This is a carrier female. She got the abnormal X chromosome from her mom and the normal allele or normal chromosome from her dad. Uh, this boy and this, and this girl, both of them got the normal X chromosome from uh, both parents. Okay, this is a carrier. Now, this carrier right here, now notice that this carrier right here, uh, she's married to a normal male, but she transmitted the, uh, the, the abnormal X chromosome. Uh, you know, when I say abnormal X chromosome, I'm talking about an X chromosome that carries the abnormal allele, okay? So not the whole X chromosome is, in a, uh, is uh, abnormal. So uh, there is transmission of the X chromosome, abnormal X chromosome to the son, and of course the Y chromosome from the father. Okay, so this is basically the pattern. Now notice here that if the male is affected, this male would transmit. Uh, so if the male is affected, now all uh, his females would be carriers if the mother is normal. Okay, so pay attention to this pattern. Now if, if, um, uh, if the, the, the male is, again, if the male is affected, uh, this male would transmit the abnormal X chromosome to uh, his daughter right here. So she is a carrier, an obligate carrier. Okay, and if she marries a, <clears throat> if she marries a normal male, uh, she would transmit the abnormal X chromosome to her son. Okay, so there's 50% chance that sons would be uh, abnormal. Okay. Now, uh, when is it that you can have an X-linked recessive disease that is completely expressed or completely apparent? Well, it happens if the allele frequency of the disorder is, is high within a family or a population. So you would really have a large number, relatively, relatively large number of individuals having this disorder uh, apparent. Um, uh, female hemizygous, uh, that is carrier, um, uh, sorry, uh, having only one X chromosome, like uh, in case of Turner syndrome, uh, she would transmit the abnormal X chromosome. Uh, uh, she would have, I'm sorry, not transmit because females with Turner syndrome are, are, are sterile. Um, uh, but uh, someone with X uh, with Turner syndrome uh, having only one X chromosome, if this X chromosome uh, carries the allele, well, uh, the person would show the disease. Uh, female with uh, deletion of the same allele of the normal X chromosome. If there is faulty X inactivation, that is, uh, both alleles are inactivated, okay? Uh, or you can have skewed X uh, inactivation, that is, inactivation of the X chromosome with the normal allele. Okay, you can have uh, X autosomal uh, translocation, and this happened with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. What it means is that uh, during um, uh, during um, cell division, you can have translocation of the um, uh, abnormal allele uh, to another uh, chromosome. Um, so, so this individual would have two faulty or two defective alleles. Now, in terms of the uh, X-linked dominant disease inheritance, uh, there are a, a number of criteria. Uh, the child of an affected heterozygous female, regardless of sex, would have 50% chance of being affected. Makes sense. Uh, for an affected male, all daughters, but none of the sons would be affected. 
Again, it makes sense. Male to male transmission never occurs. Of course, it makes sense. Now, um, X inactivation in this case, it's really significant. Okay, so again, a recessive gene in a carrier female uh, is occasionally expressed due to the inactivation of significant number of X chromosome containing the normal gene. Now, a dominant trait, uh, a, a female can escape a dominant trait if the X chromosome is inactivated. An example of an X-linked disorder, dominant disorder is hemophilia, which is caused by mutations in, um, in either, in, in predominantly in, in the gene that encodes factor eight, or, which is involved in blood coagulation. Okay, now, um, and, and there is locus heterogeneity that is uh, associated with hemophilia. Another uh, common disorder is the Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Again, it's an X-linked dominant disorder. Um, okay, so uh, there is something, uh, another phenomenon that is important, which is known as anticipation. So now we're done with the with the X-linked disorder. So let's talk about anticipation now. Anticipation means that uh, that these signs and symptoms of individuals having the genetic condition, uh, the genetic condition would, would be more and more severe with subsequent generations. So meaning that a person might have a, a, um, a mutation or a genetic defect, but this person would, be, would not be affected with no phenotypes. The person would be normal, except that with subsequent generations, you have the the uh, the the phenotypes appearing in these individuals. This is called anticipation. Okay, and usually it is associated with trinucleotide repeat expansion, meaning like like exactly like Huntington's disease, for example. So so you have you can have CAG repeat. Okay. And this CAG repeat uh, in individuals, uh, normal individuals might be less than 26, as I mentioned before. Now, uh, with subsequent uh, generations, uh, individuals might have uh, more of these repeats, so they would have 30 repeats. The following generation, they would have 35 to 40 repeats, and, and symptoms would appear in these individuals. Uh, an example is fragile X mental retardation syndrome. Basically, you have a repeat of CGG in the gene encoding a protein known as FMR1. Now, uh, so what happens here in these individuals is that you have a female that is normal but having uh, a number of repeats, large number of repeats. Uh, this uh, female would transmit uh, the FMR gene with more repeats to, uh, to uh, her son. And this son would also be normal. So the number of repeats are, are high. No, no, sorry, number of repeats is high, but still they're not high enough to show the phenotype, okay? So this is known as a normal transmitting uh, male. Now this male would marry and, and daughters would be, um, would have increasing number of repeats and these daughters would uh, uh, show these symptoms. Now, if these daughters uh, get married, then uh, uh, her, if, if a daughter has that, if, if a daughter with abnormal number of repeats gets married, then uh, her son would have increasing number of repeats and symptoms would uh, be uh, very clear. Okay, so this phenomenon is known as uh, permutations. That is when you have these increased repeats with subsequent uh, generations. Now, uh, so this is uh, how it looks like. Now you have, for example, you have this uh, female uh, carrying increased number of repeats. Um, now this male, uh, her son would have uh, you know, more of these repeats. This is a normal transmitting male right here. Now, his daughter is, uh, would have even more of these repeats, right? But she's still normal. But notice that with the, with the following generation, you have more and more of these repeats in, these, in, 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 these, uh, in, in males, basically. Okay. 
the Y linked inheritance is very uh, uh, very quickly. You have transmission of the disorder in all males uh, in every single generation because they get the uh, defective Y chromosome from uh, from this one male. Okay, mitochondrial disorder is maternal mitochondria is uh, maternally transmitted. Okay, uh, so so as the the DNA. Um, and, and they follow this pattern of inheritance from uh, females to males. Of course, now there's a lot of heterogeneity in mitochondrial DNA, and it gets worse with, with time and with age because you have more and more hits on, on mitochondrial DNA, so it gets more defective with age. Now, so there's a lot of variability in terms of mitochondrial inheritance. Um, what I should uh, point out here is that there is a solution uh, to mitochondrial inheritance so uh, which is basically if you have a sort of like quote-unquote surrogate mother uh, that is you can have uh, well sort of like a donor so you can have a female donating uh, her ovum um, and what uh, scientists would do is to remove the nucleus from that ovum uh, keeping the mitochondria in, in, in uh, the ovum and they would transmit or transfer the mother's nucleus or the mother's uh, uh, ovum's nucleus to the uh, donor's ovum. So now you have in this ovum uh, two uh, DNA, uh, two types of DNA. You have the, the mother's uh, nuclear DNA and the donor's mitochondrial DNA. And then this ovum would be fertilized with the father's uh, sperm resulting in a cell containing three types of DNA. Now, the embryo or the baby would be born just fine and healthy. Okay, so uh, this was done in the UK uh, about um, 10 years ago, sort of like 10 years ago, uh, and it has been approved by the UK Parliament and other countries as well, and it, it, it will become a very common uh, procedures in, in, uh, in the clinic. Okay, and fertility clinics. So, uh, but in Islam, uh, scientists have scholars have declared that it is, um, it's uh, not it's uh, not lawful. Okay, so it, it's uh, prohibited in Islam. So this is a summary of the different features of single gene disorders or Mendelian patterns of inheritance. Uh, you can um, read these and learn them and look at the pedigree. Uh, and um, I hope you'll be able to distinguish these uh, disorders according to the pedigrees. Now, there are other modes of inheritance as well. We talked about mosaicism before. Um, there are uh, two patterns of inheritance that are uh, sort of like um, rare, but they can happen. You have what is known as uniparental disomy, and you have what is known as imprinting. Now, we talked about mosaicism before. It's post-zygotic, so it's after the formation of the zygote. Um, so you can have a mutation that occurs in uh, somatic cells or the, the germline cells. Okay. Now, excuse me. Now you have the parental disomy. Now what happens with the parental disomy is that you have a um, uh, you you can have um, a a zygote sorry and a germline cell having two chromosomes so you have um, abnormal separation of the chromosomes during meiosis so you have an ovum that that will have two chromosomes okay homologous chromosomes and if it gets fertilized by the other germline cell that is you know sperm. Uh, sperm, for example, you would have a cell that would, that would have uh, three of the same chromosome. Now, it can happen that this cell would kick out one of the three chromosomes. So it's either one of these two or it can uh, remove this uh, chromosome right here, okay, the blue chromosome. So in this case, you would have a zygote having two chromosomes from the same parent. Okay, 
uh, this what can happen with uh, cystic fibrosis. Uh, it, it's a, it was a phenomenon that was um, uh, identified in cases of cystic fibrosis. Okay. Now, the other one is imprinting. Now, imprinting is related to epigenetic inheritance. Um, and epigenetic inheritance, basically, for some genes, um, it's either the maternal or the paternal genes that must be activated. Okay, so that's really important. We talked about epigenetics before. So when a, a gene is, um, is inherited, uh, from both parents, or that is alleles, one of them must be activated, or and the other must be inactivated. Okay, so this is um, this is um, something that happens for some genes. Now, what happens if the if if the gene that is supposed to be expressed is activated, or if it gets inactivated, it depends. Um, is abnormally expressed, then you would have a phenomenon that a, a, a syndrome or you know, certain syndromes can appear in these individuals. So, uh, and a great example is a condition known as Prader Willi or the Engelmann syndrome, okay, which is related to deletion of this part of chromosome uh, 15. Now, what happens here, uh, and it, so we're talking about the same gene that is uh, removed or the same region of the chromosome that is deleted. So in, in case of the prader willi gene, you have deletion of the paternal gene, or you can have maternal uniparental disomy. In other words, you can have uh, expression of the maternal gene whereas uh, normally the paternal gene is, so the paternal gene is not expressed whatsoever so that would cause the prader willi gene now in terms of the Angelman syndrome here you can ha you would have deletion of the maternal gene or you can have paternal uniparental disomy so for this condition right here you, you have to have expression of both alleles from both parents if one of them is deleted you would have a syndrome Okay. So if the paternal gene is deleted, you would have the prader willi syndrome. If you have deletion of the maternal gene, then you would have uniparental disomy. Or in other words, if you have expression of the maternal genes only, in case of having uniparental disomy, you would have the, you know, the prader willi uh, syndrome. If you have expression of the paternal gene only as a result of uniparental disomy or deletion of the maternal gene, you would have the Angelman syndrome. Okay, so these are the different causes of of how this can happen. Like in terms of the prader willi syndrome, it's mainly due to paternal to deletion of the paternal uh, chromosome, mainly. Okay, uh, whereas with the Angelman uh, syndrome, you would have mainly deletion of the maternal. Um, maternal uh, portion of that chromosome okay so uh, let's uh, stop here and we'll continue with the third part um, later on